although uh, full factorial experiment is uh, simple methods which can convert a continuous variables into discrete variables. Therefore, we can uh, reduce an infinite design space into just a finite number of parameter combinations. However, the number of experiments will increase very rapidly as the number of factors or levels increase. For example, if we have three factors, each factor has three levels. The total number of exper experiments for four factorial experiments will be 27, just like a cube over here. And assume this is factor x, factor y, and factor z. And the total 27 combination will be the dot over here. And if the number of experiments increase, or the level increase, the number will increase very rapidly. For instance, if we have five three-level factors, then the total number of experiments will become 243, which is a lot if you are talking about a real engineering applications. So people are thinking, is it possible we just do part of or you can call a fraction of the full factorial and then use some techniques just like what we did before the effect plot the response table then we can determine the relationship or the in effect of these uh, control variables to the output then we can use the effect plot to select the optimum combinations, the best treatment combinations for the design. So this is called, this kind of techniques that we use in response table is called analysis of means. If we can do that, then we can just do a part of experiments, just like this one. We can select only nine experiments from this full factorial and using the analysis of mean, then we can predict which one in the full factorial is the best uh, parameter combinations. Then we can greatly reduce the number of experiments. And this kind of techniques or this kind of experiment is called fractional factorial experiments. Let me give you an example for these uh, fractional factorial experiments. Say if you have seven two-level factors just like this one, then the total number in the four factorials will be 128. And uh, if we just select 8 from this 128, just like this one, and these 8 experiments is part of or a fraction of this four factorial. But as you can see, since we just want to select a fraction of the experiments, the selection of the experiments will be very important. This selection has to be very balanced and very symmetric. Therefore, each factor can be determined very, uh, sub, uh, very objectively. Like this one. For these eight experiments, when you look at that, for these seven variables, each variables during these eight times of samples, half of the experiments, four experiments, A is in level 1, and the other half of the experiments, A is in level 2. If you look at the rest of the factors, you will notice the same things, such as for factor D, four experiments, they are in level 1, and four experiments are in level 2. So they are very balanced in one way. Also, when you look at the first four experiments, when A is in level 1, the rest of the factors like B, C, D, E, F, G, they all uh, balancedly distributed among level 1 and level 2, just like B. For four experiments, when A is in level 1, two experiments, B is in B1, two experiments, B is in B2. Same thing for the rest of the factors. So therefore, this experience is very uh, symmetric. And uh, um, 
why it is called orthogonal ray? Let's look at these uh, uh, tables. Um, for the uh, conventional statisticians, statisticians, they used to call, uh, they used prefer to use minus one for level one. They use sign minus one to scan for the level one, and use one to scan for the level two. So we can convert the previous uh, experiment into this one. So assume for each column is a column vectors. So if you multiply for these two columns and the inner product of these two column vectors will become zero, which stands for vector A and vector B are orthogonal. In two-dimensional, orthogonal stands for normal. So when in a two-dimensional problem, vector A and vector B are normal to each other, the inner product of these two vectors will become zero. But in the uh, dimension higher than three, uh, we don't call two vectors are normal to each other. We say that these two vectors are orthogonal to each other. We can determine whether these two vectors are orthogonal using the inner product. If the inner product is zero, then I would say these two column vectors are orthogonal to each other. So when you uh, carefully examine all the column vectors in this fractional factorial, you will notice that you, when you multiply do in, in the product for any two column vectors, they will be all zero, which means that these column vectors are all orthogonal to each other. So we can simply using this concept, use this uh, sim simple rules to examine if these uh, samples, if these uh, arrays are very symmetric and balanced distributed among different levels of these factors. So Takuchi has uh, collected a lot of orthogonal arrays for engineering applications. As you can see from here, this is the number of experiments, orthogonal array, and for each orthogonal array, this column stands for how many experiments will be in this orthogonal array. And here stands for what is the maximum number of factors can be used in this orthogonal array. And here we presented in this orthogonal array how many uh, factors are in two levels. How many factors are in three levels, four level, and five levels? So let me give you an example, just like the previous exa example, which we have eight experiments. Here we call it L8. In this L8 orthogonal array, there are in total eight experiments. And as you might notice, that they are in total seven columns, which means that you can. Uh, arrange seven factors to these orthogonal arrays and for each factors they are all in two level and let me give you a, a example for uh, three level factors like this L9 so the total will be nine experiments and uh, there will be four factors at most which they are all in three levels um, let me uh, give uh, using L4 as an example to uh, represent how to uh, denote how to represent this orthogonal array. Here, as you can see, we often use L to scan for an orthogonal array because this array used to be called Latin square. So we use the, this capital L to, to stand for an orthogonal array. And the second uh, numbers behind L stands for the total number of experiments will be in this orthogonal array, like this one. This is L4, which means that there are four experiments. Then this two stands for, uh, for each factors, they are in two levels, and the level of each variables, and how many 
And what's the maximum number of variables can be accommodated in this orthogonal array is noted over here. 2 to the power of 3. Not the power of 3, but I will read it 3 to the level factors. So this 3 stands for the maximum number of variables can be accommodated. Just like this one. There will be 3, which means that if we can use 3 factors and each factor has 2 levels. Here this L4 can be used for 3 2 level factors. For another example, like the L8 I just mentioned before, and it is denoted L8, and here it can be used for 7 2 level factors. Like here, you have 7 columns which can be used for 7 variables. And each variables are in two levels. And this is called L8. However, this uh, orthogonal array can be used uh, for the experiments contains from four factors up to seven factors. Just like this one. If I only have four factors, can I come up an orthogonal array which can be used for four two factor uh, two level factors? Yes. Simply you just uh, pick any four columns from this uh, L8. For example, like me, I pick the first four columns and then neglect the rest. And when you look at this orthogonal array, this is an orthogonal array can be used for four factors. Therefore, if you want to use five, factor, five, five factors, five two-level factors, you just pick five columns from this L8. But uh, as I mentioned before, uh, if you only have three factors, three two-level factors, the full factorial will be in total eight experiments. Therefore, it's, it is become meaningless to use L8 for three uh, two-level factors because it is already a full factorial. We don't need to use this orthogonal array because it is not a fraction, but it's a full factorial. So for this L8 can be used starting from four factors up to seven factors. And again, this is uh, experiments L12, which can be used for 11 two-level factors. As you can notice, they are all two levels for each factor. And this is L8, I'm sorry, L9. L9 is also going to array for three-level factors. Uh, here, you can be, it can be used for four three-level factors, A, B, C, D, and each factor has three level and they are in total nine experiments. For each treatment, I call this row a treatment. And for each treatment, this experiment is for the first treatment, A is in level one, B is in level one, C level one, D is level one. And for the rest of the treatments, the factors are assigned according to this orthogonal rate. Say, L18 is a, a, a very different factors, a different orthogonal array compared with previous orthogonal array because it's a mixed array. Here we have 18 experiments, and here this orthogonal array can be used, contains one two level factors, which is arranged in the first columns, and seven three level factors from B to H. These are all in three levels. And this is 27, L27, which can be used for 13 three level factors. So uh, when you uh, come up with experiments, you can come back to this table to select the suitable orthogonal array for your experiments. For example, if you have uh, um, five three-level factors, five three-level factors, then which orthogonal array can be used? Because it is three level, so you just look here, because you have five factors, so you need to look at the columns which can be used, which has columns more than five. Here you can look at this one, L18 is one of the choice, because L18 has, can accommodate seven three-level factors. Or L27 is another choice because L27 can accommodate, accommodate 13 three-level factors. 
L36 is another choice too, or L54. So whenever you have an experiment, uh, you want to uh, pick an uh, orthogonal array, you can simply look at the level and the number of experiments and pick an orthogonal array which has more uh, columns or more space enough for your factors. But we can have a lot of choices, just like uh, uh, what I mentioned in previous. If I have five three-level factors, you can choose from L18, L27, L36, or L54, even L81. Which one can you pick? Um, or what's the difference for the choices? Just like an uh, election poll, uh, you have two uh, candidates. You want to determine which candidate uh, we have the uh, uh, better choice to get elected. So you can make a telephone call, telephone poll to determine what's the supporting rate. You can use 1,000 telephone calls to determine the, the rating, or you can use 5,000 telephone calls to determine the rating. Which one is better? Certainly, 5,000 telephone poll should provide a better or more accurate predictions than just 1,000 uh, telephone poll. Similarly, like this one, even though L18, 27, 36, 54, 81, they all can be used for five three-level factors. But L81, the, num the more number of experiments you use, uh, the higher accuracy you will predict. But uh, since uh, when you think of the number of costs, the, the cost you need have to pay for the experiments, Taguchi suggests we always start from the smallest orthogonal array. In this case, it's L18. Once you can solve your problem using a smaller orthogonal array, which will be very effective, but if you run into troubles, then you can gradually increase your number of experiments, like L27.